Right. So uh, Robert Lee owns a, a speed shop in Salem Springs here close to me. He, uh -huh. he wants to know what's the biggest difference between naturally aspirated and a turbo cam? You know, okay. A lot of times you'll hear people say every cam's a blower cam or every cam's a turbo cam or anything like that. And, and there's like this ounce of truth in there that 90% of the things we do when we do go for nitrous or blowers or turbo has to do more with tailoring the torque curve for the application than it does for the actual boost that's in it. To give an eye, for instance, say we put a, um, a three liter blower, three liter ish blower on LS or we hit it with, you know, 250, 300 horsepower nitrous. Either one of those is going to, to put a pile of torque down low. You know, mm -hmm. that blower or that nitrous, you know, is going, that, that 300 horsepower with the nitrous is going to put 500 foot pounds into the bottom end of it. Same thing with that big blower. It's going to make the boost just like that. And mm -hmm. it's all this torque to the bottom. Well, what happens with that torque if, if by chance you have enough tire, you know, you've got some super drag slick radial thing and you've got the best four link to ever, and you absolutely hook it. Well, all you're going to do is stand the thing up on the back bumper and get one of those nice, you know, one of those, remember that old Forester <laughs> advertisement where it showed the bottom of the car, you know, right before it breaks the oil pan? Yeah, I mean, yeah. You're going to get a great shot. You're going to have a bunch of broken parts. Um, so in some of those applications, we'll put more exhaust and spread the lobe separation out, put a little more duration to it. We'll tweak the specs of the camshafts to lose 30 or 40 foot pounds down low, but gain 20 or 30 horsepower up top. Now compare that to an NA application, you would never give up 30 or 40 foot pounds down low because you're not traction limited. You can hook that. Yep. Where on the blower or the, or the nitrous, you may, and even some of the turbos, you may give up some of the low end to try to get some up high. Now, that's the normal, that's the support of every cam's a blower cam that we're just tailoring it. Here's the not support of it. There are two applications where you really have to be careful. One is when your compressor size is limited. Like you take NHRA factory shootout, those cams look very, very special. And the reason is, is they have a smallish blower. The blower compressor map, if you look at it, you go, okay, well, this thing needs, this thing can move about 1,200 horsepower worth of air. Then you look at how fast the class is going, you go, I need to make about 1,200 horsepower. How do you make 1,200 horsepower? You can't, like, keep a lot of overlap in something and blow 500 horsepower through the cylinder and make 1,200 horsepower with a 1,200 horsepower blower it becomes a lot like restrictor plate racing. You have to be able to capture every bit of the air that that blower supplies. So the specs get really weird on that. Same deal if it's a limited turbo with a smaller compressor, you have to be really careful with that. The other thing is if you have a, um, a lot of back pressure to boost, where like a salmon, it wants to go upstream instead of, you know, it wants the exhaust, <laughs> the intake valve that overlap. So there's definitely some places where, where we have to be very, very cognizant of the special requirements of a limited compressor or some weird boost to back pressure where air is going to do weird things during overlap. But in general, for a given RPM, the intake closing doesn't change a whole lot based on boost. It doesn't change at all based on the nitrous oxide. The exhaust opening, because you're making a lot more or a lot less, it may move very slightly, and the overlap is very sensitive on the application. So even if all the specs start to look the same, it's really because you're looking at intake closing, you're looking at exhaust opening, you're looking at overlap, and then you're selecting around that. But you have to keep into mind the traction limits or the application specifics. So a lot of times you're doing blower cams, you're really tailoring it for the application. And that makes sense. And then, so when, like if, if you're building a class car, mm -hmm. you guys need to know that going into it. Oh, absolutely. Like just saying, yeah, I want a max effort five, three, and I'm going to run in this class. Sometimes that may be a completely different cam setup or like a, I would imagine just a drag only car or like I'm a, it's going to see some street miles. 
Right, like on the a drag only card, you don't have to worry anything about idle stability, right? You know, you just go, dude, if it can't get through the pitch, you push, you know, like, I'm sorry, I figure it out, you know. Um, but on a street car, if you go like, hey, I'm gonna pick up my kids at kindergarten, you know, like the power brakes have to work three or four times, right? You know, it's, yeah. <laughs> you have to know these things. And there's definitely in between, you know, stuff so that's not drag only and not picking up the kids in the car rider line at kindergarten, you know? And so you figure out where and there, and that's a lot about your idle characteristics. So you have to be careful about that. Like you mentioned blowers, blowers because the rotors are in that, in that airstream, they don't get as weird about big overlap numbers. You know, they dampen when that exhaust tries to go back and put a big pulse, it dampens that out. So that's why blowers often, you see bigger spec cams on the street because they don't have the idle, you know, issues that a normal That makes sense. Well, so there's all kinds, that's why people ask you about gear ratio and transmission, you know, they're like, why does the engine care what gear ratio I have in my car is? Well, what we're really asking when, when a cam guy asks you all these questions about your application, after first he asks you a bunch of questions about his engine, your engine. He's trying to figure out what's the engine. Then the next thing he, a good guy will ask you is all about your application. You know? And what he's really doing is trying to figure out, you may have told him you're gonna be an 8,000 RPM guy, but when you tell him you have 273 gears and 32 inch tall tires, you know, he knows that you're not, you know, <laughs> RPM guy. You're going to be on the expressway at 2200 RPM. You know, so, you know, a lot of that's figuring out what, how do I need to tailor that torque curve? Just like we talked about before, how do I tailor the torque curve for the individual vehicle engine combination specific?